with Victrex. Victrex, for those of you who may not know us, have been making poly ether ether ketone or peak polymers for over 40 years. These are high performance polymers, high temperature, high chemical resistance. They're used in industries like aerospace, flight, medical implants, oil and gas, high temperature and high performance industrial. And we've been very happy to collaborate with Hexagon and Belland and Zioneer on a project that is focusing on this product, Low Melt Peak AM200, which is a peak optimized for additive manufacturing. And it enables soluble support printing, which is Zioneer's product. My name is Eldis Kiri. I'm working on Hexagon. With an Hexagon, we develop a series of simulation tools. And the one that we will see today is more dedicated to polymers. So how to print crystalline of almorph material by taking into account some information about the printer itself, like the G code, the temperature of the chamber, how the part is printed and so on. And the goal of the simulation is to predict what is the warpage and the distortion of the, of the part. And we will see with the collaboration work today how the difference by printing some crystal material or amorph material and how we can reduce also the warpage of the part. Okay, I'm Christoph. I'm working on this project together with Victrex and Hexagon. We've been on it for about a year. It's called First Time Right Printing of AM200. And what we want to utilize is soluble support and simulation. I think it's safe to say the AM industry as a whole, it wouldn't be where it's at right now if we didn't have simulation. And the more difficult materials we want to work with, it doesn't matter if it's metal or if it's polymers required to really use simulation because some materials, some geometries, you really just can't print properly if you don't simulate this beforehand and maybe change something to your process, change something to your geometry. And that's why it's really an integral part in the industry to, to have simulation. What you see here is um, there's actually two ways to print semi-crystalline parts like uh, the AM200. You can either print it amorphous or you can print it directly crystalline. And if you take a look at these pictures, we have some examples of, of the simulation we did. We calculated the crystallinity for this part. We compared this to DSC measurements and where we're at right now, we can calculate the crystallinity of any given part in a range of already around one or two percent. So we're really quite close yet and if you go one way or the other you have advantages and disadvantages so of course if you print peak or polyether ketones directly crystalline you get the final part instantly so you don't have to have this extra step of annealing the part but the downside of course is you need to have more expensive printers and up to now there's no soluble support materials for these kind of materials because they can't withstand the high chamber temperatures that are necessary to print it that way. On the other hand, if you go for amorphous printing, you can use cheaper printers, you can use soluble support like our VXL line of products. But of course, printing directly crystalline, you don't have to do annealing. Printing amorphous, if you want to have a crystalline part, you have to do the annealing step afterwards. And that's where it's getting difficult. Why does it matter? Why do we need soluble supports? If you take a look at these parts, I think it's pretty clear you want to have hollow cavities inside your part. See an HVAC duct on the screen right now. And this is just plain not possible if you want to print a peak directly crystalline. There's an urgent need to utilize soluble support materials. And the approach so far, of course, you can go trial and error. But since it's an expensive process, this is really not, not the way to go. And that's what we want to change change and if you take a look at this picture, you see a part on the left. It's a simple geometry. It's a bridge kind of structure. And what you see on the left is the amorphous print. And you already see a slight bend. So it's bent downward. Below that, you see the simulation. So we calculated the deformation of this part. And on the right side, after we put it in the oven for annealing, we get the crystalline part. And I think it's quite visible. The deformation increases drastically. So what's the way to go to avoid that? That essentially, we always start out with our desired geometry. So that's the first step. You need your CAD model. Then you want to print this part. So you need to generate your G-code. And that's when it gets different from your typical approach. So you put your G-code into the hexagon simulation software. You calculate the part. And what you get as a result is the warpage and the shrinkage after annealing. Of course, you can print it, do the construction again, deform it a little, print it again. But if you go this 
route is a very impressive feature in this simulation software where you can calculate a new geometry. So let's say it's bent downwards, like we've seen in the previous slide. You generate a new geometry that's bent the other way, uh, that's slightly deformed when it comes to any constriction in the part like we've seen. And the third thing to consider is the shrinkage due to annealing, because once your part crystallizes, of course it shrinks, so you have to scale the part you want to print. And this is the really uh, difficult mathematics behind all of that. And what you see here, these are really the calculated geometry. So that's the point where we're at right now. We can calculate the, the warpage, we can calculate the crystallinity, and by that generate a new geometry, which we then again put in the slicer. We make a new G-code and essentially we print a deformed part that later on uh, deforms again into the initially desired geometry.